Hello friends, welcome back to another video session from Shomu's Biology and we've been talking about the immunology and the different parts of immune system and how immunology is constructed with all the immune system cells. In the last video we talked about the process of antigen presentation and the role of antigen presenting cells in contacting both the cell mediated immunity as well as the humoral mode of immunity. Now in this video I want to talk about uh, MHC1 and MHC2 because with the help of these two different surface receptors antigen presenting cells can present antigen okay so what are those things MHC1 and MHC2 these are nothing but kind of a glycoproteins that are found on the surface of eukaryotic cells with nucleus okay now there are two types MHC1 and MHC2 all the nucleated cell in our body contains MHC1 they have MHC1 on the surface because you know we have uh, the cells are filled with all the glycoproteins receptor on the surface but this MHC1 is different for different person I, it is tissue specific for different tissues this MHC structure and its different length of the chain and the amino acids that are present in the chain to make the MHCs will vary so that is why the name is different like major histocompatibility complex why this name because that when we discover this this glycoproteins it's found out during the tissue grafting from one person to the next person or organ transplantation from from the donor to the recipient now when we're transferring an organ from a donor to the recipient all the MHCs should match otherwise the recipient cannot accept the donor organ because it's about again foreign and what is self because it's distinguished by our immunity Wh whether uh, it is a single self molecule or it's a foreign molecule because it's coming from the outside so it's a foreign they recognize that as a foreign particle the only way they will not recognize it as a foreign particle if it carries the same sort of receptors on the surface because all this immune system that we are looking at it's a beautiful example of cell signaling going on at a like a remarkable scale because all those small molecules all those cells and everything that are that are there they are interacting with the help of different cell surface receptors they are interacting by secreting chemokines which are the signaling molecules the chemical factors so what happens actually this this receptors are playing very vital role that's why the name come major histocompatibility complex so whether uh, this 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 glycoproteins are distinguished and they are they are determine whether a tissue graft will be rejected or it will be accepted that's why the name came but now if we go back to the discussion what we're talking about all the nucleated cell carries this major histocompatibility complex one but they are lacking major histocompatibility complex 2 because MHC class 2 is only found in antigen presenting cells or APCs and what are the antigen presenting cells in immune system we know macrophage dendritic cells and B cells they are known as antigen presenting cells why because they have a specific function which is very special that if the, there is a pathogen they will engulf that pathogen with phagocytosis then they will break that pathogen down into small fragments which are known as antigens and then showcase that antigen by loading them with a receptor and show them to rest of the immune system cells but that receptor where they load this antigen are MHC1 and MHC2 that is the job right but all the cells have MHC1 so if required all the cells can can supply and, and load the antigen fragments to MHC1 and so case but only macrophage dendritic cell and B cells can have MHC2 so so when they start to fragment the foreign invader or pathogen and showcase that to rest of the cells then they will need MHC2 and they only have that rest of the cells don't have MHC2 okay so now let's talk about this whole process in much more details the difference between MHC1 you know uh, in the last video if you if you are looking this video and watching this video sequentially you know in last video we talked about the antigen presentation and we know requirement of both MHC1 and MHC2 are important because MHC2 will help to activate some more T cells 
some more T helper cells that will help in bringing more macrophages, more dendritic cells, so more antigen presenting cells will be bought as well as this, this interaction between the antigen presenting cell with the T helper cell with the help of MHC class 2 molecule can also help in activating the B cells and start producing antibodies. So all these things are brought with the help of MHC2. But what is the job of MHC1? The function of MHC1 is to designate a specific cell of our body as sick, as weak and it will be killed. So there are two options when there is something wrong going on in our body. First thing is that foreign pathogen enters pathogens start to spread. Now it's not killing a cell or it's not damaging the cell then and there but it's spreading. So what we want, we want to stop the spread of that, of that pathogen. So we'll engulf that pathogen, break them down, present them with MHC class 2 to the rest of the cells. T cell will be activated, it will further activate rest of the antigen presenting cells and it will activate the B cells. But on the other hand, if some of our normal body cell is diseased, it's infected and there is no way that disease can be fixed. For example, if it's invaded by viruses and the cell is filled with virus particles which is drawn here with these red dots. Let's say those are virus particles. They completely invade the cell and infect the cell. There is no way the cell is going to survive. In those conditions, to limit the damage, sometimes we need to kill our own body cells to prevent that damage there because if we kill that cell this disease cannot be spread to the nearby tissue. So to do that in that case those targeted cell or those sick cell they have MHC1 because all nucleated cell have that MHC1 so they will showcase some part of this component outside those, those fragment of antigens outside or they will sometimes showcase the alteration of lipids in their membrane which give the signal to the nearby cell which could be natural killer cell or cytotoxic T cell to, to guess that that this cell is infected we need to take an action. For example here if MHC1 loads some part of the fragment of pathogen and showcase outside so this cell is now very sick it's showing a flag outside that I am sick please kill me to prevent the damage to the rest of the tissue. So cytotoxic killer cell will come, it will interact with the help of T cell receptor with MHC1 loaded with the pathogenic portion. It starts secreting some chemical factors known as perforins and granzymes that are going to ultimately kill the target body cell. These are the job of both MHC1 and MHC2. Now another thing I must tell between the, the difference between MHC1 and 2 is that MHC2 is provided by this dendritic cells or macrophage all these antigen presenting cells. They will interact with CD4 type of T cells while MHC1 interact with CD8 type of T cells. CD4 type of T cells are known as T helper cells. Because the job of this T helper cell is to activate some more T helper cells, is to activate B cells, is to proliferate macrophages or any other antigen presenting cells. While this job of TCD8 plus T cell is known as cytotoxic T cell. So let me write that. Cytotoxic T cell. So it's toxic for, for cells, right? So the CD8 T cells are cytotoxic T cells. So the job of this cytotoxic T cell is to kill the target cell. Okay? That is a, another functional difference between MHC1 and MHC2 and how they engage in interaction. Now if we go in more details about the structural and functional process of and processing of MHCs, there are some differences present between them. So for understanding I must erase this portion. And one thing I can tell you is that this MHC1, MHC1, it has a structure of, let me draw it in a very basic drawing of the structure. It has two, two different chain. One is the alpha chain, which is uh, the proper full alpha chain and a partial 
beta chain. A partial beta chain that is the structure of MHC1. But if you look at the structure of MHC class 2, here we have a proper alpha chain along with a proper beta chain. Okay? This is the structure. This is the structure of uh, so proper alpha chain and beta chain together and here is only alpha chain and a partial beta chain for MHC1. Now how they prepared these structures? Now the thing is inside the cell, so let me draw this whole idea. I am not going to talk very details but I am just going to give an overview of this process. If this is the cell, all this processing of antigens and loading the antigens on this MHC taken place in the endoplasmic reticulum. So, I am drawing the endoplasmic reticulum here. Let us say these are the regions of endoplasmic reticulum. And normally what happens in the cytosol there are proteasome. Proteasome are the giant machines that are present in the cytosol of eukaryotic cell which can break down proteins into smaller fragments. So, what happens actually let us say there is an engulfment of a pathogen. So, green is the color of the pathogen or bacteria for example, they engulf this bacteria inside. After this engulfment it is released. So, the fragment of, so normally what happens after this engulfment this, this vesicle will be fused with lysosome and you know lysosome fi is filled with all those proteolytic enzymes that are going to degrade some portion of this fragment uh, of the pathogen and it will be released outside. For example, if it is a bacteria, so let us say gram negative bacteria, so they have a LPS lipopolysaccharide layer outside. After this breaking down of the components, some part of these LPS layers are fragmented outside. So, so even though they fragment these portions, it could be LPS, it could be any po protein portion of the, uh, of the bacteria or any other part of it. So, whatever it is, let us say it is a long chain of a peptide. Now, that long chain will be further broken down by the proteasome into very tiny fragments. That is enough to be loaded onto the MHC. That is the process. They engulf the bacteria. So, let me write it as a bacteria. They engulf the bacteria, break them down, fragmentize it further with proteasome and then it is ready. Then what happens? On the other hand, in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, inside the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum, they have MHC complexes prepared. Let us say this is MHC complex 2, they make this complex ready. How exactly they make the complex ready? You know, in case of MHC 2 preparation, they have both alpha and beta chains prepared and they have this portion of binding of the antigen that portion is not free. However, there is a specific accessory protein that blocks that binding region from the beginning in this endoplasmic reticulum. It blocks this binding region normally. Now, once they fragmentized all those bacterial fragments and it is taken inside to the reticulum lumen, it is taken inside the reticulum lumen with the help of different transporters that are present here. The transporter present between the reticulum membrane and the cytosol. When it is open, they can take all those fragments of bacterial antigen inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. Now, once they bring them, then this, this invariable peptide chain that we have, it is broken by subsequent release of proteolytic enzymes. But still, even after it is broken into fragments, it still have some portions left and this portion is known as clip. Okay? The portion of the invariant chain peptide still present in the attachment or antigen binding side of MHC2. Now, what happens actually once this fragment is ready, the clip is present, 
the clip is present and this clip containing MHC class 2, this clip containing MHC class 2 is then released out. It is then, let me show the bulging, it is clipped out this is the portion of the clip. So, it is like bulged out. Once it is bulging out, then some part of this bacterial antigenic fragment replaces the clip and properly place themselves in. Remember the portion. So, normally at the beginning, this is filled with some invariable peptide. Then once it starts releasing and proteolytic enzymes are secreting, it is getting clipped. Some portion is still attached to the antigen binding portion. As now they are coming out, and also the fragments of bacterial antigen start, uh, the concentration of fragment of bacterial antigen increases, it will dissociate this clip and the antigen will occupy this place. Okay? Now, once the antigen occupies the place, that fragment MAC2 loaded with bacterial antigen is now will be fused with the membrane and as a result of that, what we will see is antigen attached on the surface of this antigen presenting cell with the help of MHC plus 2, this black one. This is how they represent the MHC class, uh, the antigen with the help of MHC class 2. The process is kind of very similar with MHC class 1, while they in that case they do not have any invariable peptide or, or, or binding with the antigen binding site. That site is free from the beginning and once they make the fragment of antigen ready, they simply load that on the top of MHC 1 and then they uh, provide it to the, to the surface of the cell. So, this is how the MHC processing is done. Okay? Remember, this processing is very important because if they do the processing with MHC class 2, then they are going to interact with CD4 type of T cell which are T helper cells and the consequence we saw earlier. But when they are interacting in and, and load them into MHC class 1, they are going to uh, release it outside and in that case the cell will be killed with the help of cytotoxic T cell because MHC 1 will interact with CD8 type of T cell which are cytotoxic in nature. So, that in a sense is the process of antigen presentation and the and the role of antigen presentation in ma major scale uh, between both MHC1 in case of MHC1 as well as in case of MHC2. But one other one another thing I should tell is about this these antigens that will be presented. Now there are different like for you can tell me that there are multiple fragments there could be cellular fragments even uh, that are present inside the cell sometimes the cellular protein is also being degraded by the proteasome so why not the cellular protein is loaded onto the mhc2 by chance or by mistake yes good question but the problem in this case is that it does not happen all the time it's in fact most of the time this problem don't have any issue the reason for that is the, the binding site for MHC2 is very specific, remember, because the MHC2 antigen binding site is occupied with the clip peptide until and unless they find proper pathogenic antigen to be attached. Only if a pathogenic antigen is found, then only the clip peptide will be released and the antigen will be placed. Now, the question is how come a cell recognizes a pathogenic antigen? Now, the answer for that they do not have to recognize an pathogenic antigen, but they can recognize their self body fragments. So, they do not load the self body fragment in MHC uh, complexes, they avoid that and rest of whatever thing they do not know about must be from the pathogenic components. Another thing is in the MHC2 and the binding groove of the MHC2, there should be a specific length of amino acids that can be accommodated. More than that, will not be able to be bound, less than that will not be able to be bound. So, the only specific length of amino acid long peptide can only bound and that's, that controls what is going to be interact and what is going to be attached with that uh, MHC2, that is the idea. The complex of MHC1 is different, but MHC2 is more important in the perspective of immune responses that we know. Okay? So, that in a sense is the difference between major histocompatibility complex class 1 and class 2 also known as 
MHC1 and MHC2. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to get more and more interesting videos like that. Thank you.